Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Lovelace here today. I'm gonna to talk to you today about whether or not I think, I believe, just from all the studies I've read from, from the research, but also from pay, working with patients over 15 years, that what I believe, why I believe, I'm sorry, that a vegan diet or a vegetarian-based diet, plant-based diet is not a long-term healthy thing for human beings. Although some people do better with more vegetables, some people do better with more meat, I think they're both very important part of our diets. And so I'm gonna talk about that today. Hey, make sure you like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, we're always putting out new content content for you that hopefully is very valuable for you and will help you really become your own health expert. All right, guys, let's talk about veganism or let's talk about um, vegetarianism. When we start putting isms on things, I get really uncomfortable because I feel like it's some sort of a cult, right? It's like this, uh, uh, vegans are always wanna be all vegan or carnivore diet, they sort of, the carnivorism. Uh, yeah, they don't, you don't talk here that as much, but it's kind of like this cult, like, oh, everything should be all meat, everything should be all vegetables, and I believe that we're omnivores just based on our physiology. You can look at our teeth, you can look at our how our G digestive system works. I think we're supposed to do both, but I do think that um, some people do better with you know different directions now i want to talk about veganism and why i think it's not a healthy thing long term personally just from it's the tests i've done with patients and blood work and testing cardiometabolic uh, panels and and what their blood work looks like from crp and homocysteine levels and things like that i always see and i always is a strong word i know but i very commonly see high homocysteine levels in, pa in patients that are plant-based they do a very high plant-based diet and low to no meats and um and there's a reason for that you know when i started to see it it kind of honestly i was i was pretty surprised because homocysteine levels being high is actually a shows an increased risk of heart disease and so you would think vegetables heart disease that that doesn't seem to line up and so i researched this over the years and it makes sense now to me why this would happen um, and because you see there's there's so many benefits to meat now I will address this so when people go and, and let's say they're you know eating a regular sad american diet or maybe they're eating some meats and vegetables whatever but then they they say okay i'm going to take out meat because of whatever health issue i have usually it's something like an autoimmune response um, something like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that and they decide they're going to take all this meat out because they heard meat causes inflammation and causes problems so they take the meat out and they feel amazing Right? I just had a patient yesterday, I was talking to her, or two days ago, I'm sorry, and was talking to the patient and she had um, rheumatoid arthritis. She took, she took out, and it actually started from breast implants. Yeah, so actually her breast implants, she started getting sick. She couldn't figure out why. Eventually she got them removed. She read sites about breast implants causing toxicity, pain in her joints. I mean, just miserable, barely could get out of bed. Miserable life, she was, she was at this point where, I mean, it just sounded miserable when she was explaining all the issues she was dealing with to me. And she, um, she got her breast implants removed, boom. All those symptoms started to disappear. Now she's just having some inflammation in her hands, but nothing like it used to be. But one of the things she also changed after, you know, a lot of these problems went away and then she decided, okay, well, I'm also going to go vegan. So she went vegan and she felt even better. And the reason you feel better after you take meat out is because, and, and the number one reason is, is you're taking two reasons I would go with. One is you're taking something out that's toxic for you and inflammatory because the type of meat you are most likely eating, there's very few people that are eating grass-fed, free-range, organic, clean meats, right? That would take them out and that would even go towards taking them out because they've investigated so much and invested so much in that that they wouldn't take those out. But so I assume that if somebody takes meat out, it's a conventional meat, right? Meat raised the way it wasn't supposed to be read. Fed grains, it makes it very acidic. Fed, fed grains, it causes a high omega-6 uh, count in that cow. Um, so we'll just do beef, for instance. Uh, a good healthy piece of meat from a beef should be a, a four to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. And after that, even some of these grass-fed animals, two to one ratios which makes it a good healthy fat ratio for our cells because our cells are a four to one ratio of good healthy fats. Problem is, is these omega-6 fats in gra grain-fed animals is more like a 20 to one ratio. And so you have this massive inflammation ratio. And so when you eat that animal, yeah, it's gonna create inflammation. It's gonna cause heart disease. It's gonna cause all kinds of health issues. So this high omega-6 count is really what's gonna lead more to uh, these health issues that we're seeing in inflammatory responses. So. People take that out, they have less of that inflammatory fat coming in and they feel better, that makes sense. Long term though, and this is what this patient actually said to me as well, is she said, but long term, I'm realizing that I'm actually not getting healthier now because I'm, I'm actually feeling worse again and her body has become very depleted in things that are very essential in meats. So bottom line is, is yes, you will feel better, but it's not a long term answer and I would say, 
change the type of meats you're eating and go go eat meats that are raised the way they're supposed to be raised. And, and there is actually more nutrients in beef than there is in chicken. Chicken is actually not a very nutrient dense food. It's low fat, which is for some reason we were taught to not eat fat, but hey, we started taking fat out of our diets and we started having heart attacks. Let me just say that again. When we start taking fat out of the American diet, we start having a massive increased rates of heart attacks and other health issues. If you go back to the early, 2000, early 1900s, heart attacks were almost minimal. And actually I have some quotes, of, I'm not gonna look them up right now, but from cardiologists who would say they've never even saw heart attacks until they started doing this whole, you know, Ansel Keys came out and said cholesterol is bad and, and saturated fat is bad for you. Then we started to see all these health issues. So with that said, uh, I believe that's why people feel better. So yes, they would feel better. And many times when you take anything out of your diet, you, you make a big dietary change, you feel better because you've taken things out that your body didn't enjoy in the first place. Now. So we change that, we get the good fats in. So, okay, so I'm gonna go through seven ways. Sorry guys, I was a little all over the place in the beginning, but I'm gonna give you seven reasons why I don't believe a, fat, a, a vegan diet is a good idea. Number one is fat-soluble vitamins. In meat, there is a lot of fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, that are essential for our overall health in general, but especially our heart health, right? And our liver health. So vitamin A is part of what processes cholesterol so that we can use it to produce our hormones. Right? Vitamin A is obviously very healthy for our skin, for our eyes. It's also very a big, big part of arterial wall strength and health as well, because those are tissues as well. And so having a good amount of vitamin A, and which is a good source, things like liver are very important for that. Now, uh, B6 and B12, I'm sorry, let's start with the, stay with the fat soluble vitamins. So vitamin D is a big part that comes from animal products as well. Vitamin E and K are actually very important as well. And our body it needs to break those things down. One of the other reasons people might not feel as good if they took fat out of their, I mean, sorry, if they took, or might feel better if they took meat out of their diet is because maybe they had a gallbladder issue from all these bad fats they've had over the years and it's not processing bile properly. And so and if, and the, the fat they're eating wasn't getting broken down and they weren't absorbing vitamins, so they felt nauseous and gross when they eat it. Well, in that case, we need to work on the gallbladder, cleaning that out and doing things that support fat breakdown, not taking meat out, okay? So fat soluble vitamins are very important. B6, B12, and folate are also a big thing that we lose when we don't eat meat. B6, B12, and folate, let's just say right here, arterial wall strength and not causing hardening of the arteries, right? Rigidness of the arteries will come when you're depleted in those. Um, B12 for energy levels, brain function, uh, hormone production, all these things are very important in the B12. Detoxification, B6, B12, folate, very important of all the detoxification or what they call methylation pathways in our body that allows our body to get rid of stuff. Right? We need those, those B vitamins and they are found in meat, very important. And so you, you look at that and say, okay, well, where am I gonna get them? You can supplement with these things, yes, but your synthetic form of these vitamins is not gonna be as bioavailable and the same and, and, and that's in the structure that it needs to be as it is if you eat the real food, okay? So I'm talking about good, healthy meats here. Uh, increasing plaques in the arteries, uh, increased plaque comes from low B vitamins as well and just overall heart health in general. Uh, a lot of times, my third reason I don't wanna go vegan is most of the time when somebody goes vegan or vegetarian, they don't just eat broccoli, right? They don't just eat these nutrient-rich foods. They also go to cereal grains, which are um, high, high in oxalates, high in different things that actually deplete the body in many minerals. A lot of the vegetables are high in these as well that cause your body the inability to absorb the nutrients that are in those vegetables as well. And the gut bacteria that we get from good healthy meat as opposed to just um, certain vegetables is gonna be missing as well. So when we eat high amounts of grains, most grains have been either, whether it's genetically modified, whether it's refined and broken down to a point where they're not the, the same product, or whether they've just been altered so much that um, our body doesn't digest them the same, and they're not high in the nutrient value that we want, and they deplete our body in a lot of these nutrients as well. Plus they cause an insulin rush, which is gonna to lead to heart issues too over time. So people tend to go to these cereal grains as well. Also, when somebody is a vegan, they start to, not only do they go to cereal grains, which will kind of increase that omega-6 fatty acid ratio, they're, um, they're eating other things like vegetable oils because they're staying away from saturated fats. So you're going to vegetable oils, canola oil, hydrogenate oils, a lot of these things that turn to trans fats in our body, increasing inflammation. So we have this four to one ratio that we want omega-6 to omega-3s, but we're not getting that omega-3. So then we say, okay, maybe I'll take a fish oil supplement, right? You take a fish oil supplement or if you're fully vegan, then you go to some sort of algae oil supplement. Well, this omega-3 fatty acids doesn't really come in a lot of vegetables like the EPA, DHA fatty acids that we need. And so we go, 
we go to fish oils, but the problem is, is the studies have shown that if you're not eating saturated, any saturated fat, the actual processing of that omega-3 fatty acid in the body to be used the way we want it to and reduce inflammation and help our cellular health and everything else isn't the same impact as if you were eating saturated fat. So that's reason number three. Reason number four is, um, actually I just said, that was number four, low in saturated fat increases omega-6 fatty acids. Six is CoQ10, which is incredible for our mitochondrial health and overall muscle health, including the heart, is depleted when we don't eat meat because we'll get a lot of that from meat. Finally, the seventh one is increased homocysteine levels that we see in vegans. When they have a high homocysteine level, that isn't, we know for sure that's an indicator of heart disease or going to cause heart issues um, and inflammation in the body. And that happens because meat has a high sulfur amino acid content, sulfur containing amino acid content, it has a high B12, B6, uh, folate acid content. And that's part of the detoxification pathways. When our methylation, okay, you can Google methylation to not go too in depth into it, but methylation is detox, part of our detoxification when we're not detoxing, our homocysteine levels will actually go up. Okay, it's kind of like a side indicator there that your body's not detoxing very well. And so that's the worst thing ever because you're looking at a diet that says, okay, I'm gonna go clean, holistic, I'm gonna eat these vegetables, and then all of a sudden you don't actually feel better over time and you start getting these other health issues. And the whole idea is to prevent heart disease, but it's getting worse. So that's those are the kind of main reasons there why I don't agree with a vegan diet. Also, and finally is this, is that raw vegetables are very hard for our body to digest, especially the ones high in lectin and high oxalates. And so we eat a lot of raw vegetables when you're vegan, okay? The gut isn't really made to break that stuff down very well. So I always recommend, at least with vegetables, that you're steaming them and finding ways to get them to be broken down before. So that's my take on veganism. Those are just seven reasons. There's more than that, but these are the first seven things that popped in my head when I sat down and said, okay, why would I tell someone not to be a vegan? And I always get the return of, what about the phytonutrients? What about this? I didn't say don't eat vegetables. I said, don't make vegetables your mainstay in your diet. Make them a part of your diet. Eat your meat first, get your stomach acid good, break down the meat, get the nutrients, the minerals, the amino acids, all the stuff that's come from that meat helps your overall health and eat your good healthy vegetables. And that is gonna be a, for the majority of the public, okay? When I shoot a video, it's the majority of people, I can't go individualized on a video, majority of people, that is gonna be a clean, healthy diet. Some are gonna need, you know, need to be more extreme one direction, some the other, but that's for the majority of the people. So, hey, I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you did, share it, all right? This is, this is how we help more people and help them see really the possibilities that health doesn't have to be something that has to be crazy hard. And it also helps them see that, you know, most of the people that come in on a vegan diet don't do it because they don't like, they don't want to hurt animals. They do it because they heard it was the healthiest way to go. I'm here to tell you, I do not believe it's the healthiest way to go based on my time with patients and based on the re all the research that I've done. Um, and there's a lot of cardiologists that agree with what I just said there. All right. You guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you next time.